Hey everyone, my name is Mitch, and today we're going to do a lion in pastels and colored pencil. So, we have a new surface today, we have a new medium today, so let me explain all of it. Um, first off, this is called suede map board, and what that is, is it's a surface that your framer will use if you're hanging a picture of Aunt Betty or whatever. It, it's like has a nice mottled effect and soft effect to it. So it'll be the mat for a picture for some of the framers. So it's popular with colored pencil recently. Um, I know some people like Jim Guiling has a course on Craftsy with thousands of people that took it. Um, and she shows you how to do colored pencil on suede mat board. So I've never tried pastel on this. So I thought I would give it a try because I have a lot of this left over. So let me show you guys real quick the types of things that I've done with colored pencil on suede matte board. So I think I've done about 11 or so, and they all take 20 or so hours. Um, so uh, there's Jack the dog, um, there's uh, Bella Blue the dog, etc., etc. And we have a bunch of different dogs that I did, and I like suede matte board because it handles colored pencil well, and let me explain why. So, if you look at the difference between velour, which is another soft surface, and then suede mat board, you'll notice that, and this is just my opinion on based upon working with it, velour has longer type fibers, and some of the fibers are not as long as the other fibers. So what you'll have is, when you go with it with colored pencil, the colored pencil will sit on top here, and then the colored pencil will sit on top there, but it'll miss a couple. So you get this railroading effect with a lot of colored pencil and velour. Suede mat board, however, it seems like it has a shorter mat and they're closer together and they're more even. I'm not saying they're exactly even, but they're more even. And so what that gets you is the colored pencil wax will sit on the top of every one of these and it'll be nice and smooth when you go over it. So it won't have the, the weird effect that you get on velour sometimes with colored pencil. And so, Jim Guiling's class, she shows you how to do all sorts of animals and it's super easy and like everybody that, that took the class posts their work and that looks amazing because, you know, colored pencil is amazing. The problem that I have is obviously I don't want to spend 20 hours. So, what we're going to do today is cheat. I'm going to try to jam some pastel inside of all the little fibers, similar to what I do with velour and see if it works. Now, the first thing that I've been playing with is this stuff is pretty harsh for doing pastels, I can tell you that. And the reason is because it does not erase very well at all. I mean, you can sit there and erase until this thing is completely through the board and it doesn't erase well at all. Um, what I do like about it though is colored pencil goes on top of the uh, pastel pretty good from what I tried. Uh, Pastel goes on nice and smooth when you have the hard, harder pastels, and the colored pencil by itself looks good. So you can see I've tried this in pastel pencil, and the problem with pastel pencil was that it's just too hard of a, a, a medium, and so not a lot of dust went into the carpet fibers, and so you got kind of that. So that was didn't work out, so I had a piece of spare board, so I jammed some pastel in it and looked pretty good it gets in there nice and thick so again doesn't erase well there's not a lot of room for mistakes so i brought out my pan pastels and tried those and those work really well so today we're going to try a little pan pastel some regular pastel and a lot of colored pencil and see where we get this could be a complete epic failure but whatever i think it's worth a shot um just a warning about the suede mat board it's hard board and it's very expensive unfortunately it's 40 bucks for a big piece and i'll cut it into eighths so this is one eighth you're looking at about five bucks for this um, but i do like the fact that it has a nice varying background here it makes a nice varying background for your portrait so you don't have to put a lot of background into them it already looks professional sort of for colored pencil so we'll try today with pastel so let me tell you what i did i went and to the computer, got a picture of the lion, turned them sideways, put some of this on it, and then traced it out, and then put some uh, graphite paper underneath, some uh, carbon paper, and then traced it again, and that's how I got it. So you don't need any fancy programs with your computer, you just 
turn it sideways in the photo viewer, zoom in, and then stick this on there and with really light, really light pen, go and trace it out. So uh, if you want to learn more about tracing from your computer monitor, uh, Lisa Klo of Lacry Fine Art has a dedicated video that I'll link in the description. Go to her site, she's awesome. And she explains, you know, how to do it and all that other stuff. So that's where I kind of picked that up from. So I tried pen, uh, pen pastel and I got a really, really nice smooth thing. And then I tried regular pastel and I got a hard surface, kind of a, a harder, thicker look. So what I want to do is switch between those, but I want a hard look, a softer look or whatever. So I got my pen pastel over here. You should see it in the picture in picture type thing. And so we're going to use that. So today, obviously we're doing a lion, as you can see, and we're going to try this out and see how this works. So again, this could epic fail, but hey, might as well take a shot. What's life if you don't try? Try, try again, and fail again. There we go. All right, get my happy glove on. I wear gloves because I don't like pastel on my fingernails. It's annoying. It like never comes out. You like dig in your fingernails like you're digging for gold or something. So I hate it. Anyway, so I have a live cam over here with the pastels. So you guys will be able to see that. What I choose and what I use. Not like I know what I'm doing or anything, but we'll give it a shot. All right, so I have my usual pan pastel tools here, and we'll give those a whirl. I have one of these. I got a bunch of stuff. I need to clean it. It's got green on it. I don't think this picture has any green. All right, so we'll start. So I did all the tracing, so we'll give this a shot. So I want to start up here. If the camera can see it, yes, I can. Uh, cool. I want to start up here and just trying to get some darker areas. I guess we'll use the... Um, I guess we'll use this big square one. I don't have many pan pastels. Sorry guys. Like I don't have like luxurious amount of pan pastels. I don't have hardly any darks. So we're going to see how this works. All right. So I'm going to grab some of this dark here and just put it up in this area here. So that's pretty dark. I like the way that goes in, which she said here. It doesn't spread too well, but it does go on. It's gonna take like a mountain of this, but whatever. There's only three bucks per thing. Uh, go up through here, go into there. So I like how it kind of mushes in the pastel up there. So uh, so we'll, as we're coming down, we use a little lighter touch down through here. And then as we come down, we'll try some of this gray. And the gray is gonna be like right about there. That doesn't look that bad. I have not used pen pastel in forever. So if you're gonna do this, what I'd recommend is not using this paper. Number one, it's outrageously expensive. And really the only reason I'm using it is because I have excess. So as you know, I don't do a lot of colored pencil anymore. I sort of relaxed off of that because it started hurting my hands. But we're gonna do colored pencil in here, just not a lot. So one of the main things that I'm going to do on this is cheat. I'm gonna show you guys how to cheat. You don't have to draw every single hair. You don't have to draw every single line. You can make it look like you drew every hair. And I'm gonna show you how to cheat with that because I got stuff to do. I'm not gonna sit here and draw every hair. You guys know if you watch any of my videos that I'm obscenely lazy and I am surely not going to draw every freaking hair. All right, so up here we got like a darker area like there. If you want to draw every hair, that's fine. More power to you on that. I just don't want to. I'd rather do it with pastel. And then do a little colored pencil, but not like a ton. All right, so here we're just trying to get the the underlying theme here of this lion. Okay, so let's talk about where the lion came from. This is from Wildlife 
www.referencephotos.com. And that is a wonderful site. I absolutely love that site. And I know all of you are screaming, why didn't you go to paint my photo? And I did go to paint my photo. And I looked through all the photos. And I liked this one better. So wildlife reference photos, you can buy one photo for five bucks. And that includes license for you to paint it, obviously, and to use your painting in, in galleries or shows, sell your painting. You can also make prints of your painting and sell that. I mean, the license is absurd for five bucks, but the even better deal, you can buy five pictures for 10 bucks, which makes it two bucks a piece. And that's what I did on here. So you get like a month to choose your five pictures. And for two bucks each, man, that's insane. Like if you go to any stock photo site, you're gonna be paying like 70 bucks. And they have all sorts of rules about what you can and cannot do with that. And some of it is pretty harsh. I mean, some of them stock photo sites. Some of the stock photo sites will have a subscription to where you can subscribe for a month and get as many photos as you want or get X number of photos. But when the subscription expires, you can't do crap with the photo. It's really stupid, man. It's like, why did I pay a subscription and now I can't actually use any of these photos. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. So I really started shying away from those sites. And, um, and of course, paint my photo. You can go there and there's 10,000 Facebook groups you can go to and get photos and paint them and all that. But I like wildlife reference photos. And one of the things I like best about that site is the, it's not like some dude got a got his iPhone and went to the zoo and took a picture. Some of those are like hardcore cameras, like four or five thousand dollar cameras with huge lenses, and you get this super super high quality picture. Like if you zoom in in the picture, you can see individual little little hairs inside of the outside of the eye and stuff. It's nuts, man. Some of the pictures are insane insanely detailed and it really really is nice for two bucks man you can't beat it and I'm gonna I'm sorry to gush about that site but I really like that site and um, and I like the licensing how you can do just about anything you want with your painting because some people do I mean when you get the uh, when you look at the license you're restricted on what you can do you're restricted on how long you can use that you're restricted on what you can do with any things that you make from that, etc., etc. And I, I like, um, I like a more clear and balanced license like um, Wildlife Reference Photos has. And they got like lions and tigers and monkeys, and birds, and domesticated cats and dogs and, and everything else. It's a wonderful sight. All right, I'll shut up about it. So we're doing base coats now. So normally base coats are just putting stuff on the paper and you want to get something on the paper other than the color of the paper right so the idea behind base coats is to save your hands from brutal abuse of sitting there with little pastel pencils and I know some people use pastel pencils for the whole painting and it's so much faster just to use a big globby pastel and plus your big globby pastel you can get some really nice ones and it's gonna look really, really good when you're done. So we're gonna come in here with colored pencil on these though. And the colored pencil is gonna give us an advantage of, uh, if you go to the Prisma color pencils, there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors. And, and you look at some of the pastel pencil sets, they don't have that many colors. But the Prisma color or any colored pencil usually has a wide variety of colors that you can choose from and that gives you the option of doing all that stuff. So it looks like we're going to have to grind this in a little bit, blend it in. This must not blend well. So from using this for about 15 minutes so far, I can say that this, this stuff doesn't blend very well at all. So just kind of put it on sort of reminds me of velour but it's not that brutal but we're gonna give it a shot we're gonna get the, the base layer in here with this stuff and then we can come back with our regular pastels and whatnot so it's not like it's all bad so we're gonna be doing a lot of um, a lot of faking of hairs and whatnot all right 
So as this comes down, this is more of a gray. And we can go here with this gray come out. And I do like pan pastels, I just don't like the fact that I don't have that many. They don't go well with velour. So pen pastel, if you're not familiar with it, is a it's a pastel with like a binder added to it that makes it sort of sticky. So it comes out like a um, it's like it it's like gummy, like a gummy pastel. And then you get these applicators and you put it on wherever you're going. Um, and I don't like it on velour because it gums up the fibers and it's not that smooth but if you use it with other paper it looks great and i know jason morgan uses a lot of pan pastel he's, he's come out with a pan pastel set and i'm definitely getting that if you don't know jason morgan he does tigers lions and all that stuff professionally like he actually pays his mortgage with painting animals and uh, he is incredible if you have not seen him go check him out put a link in the description for Jason Morgan as well because he is the the god of animal painting some of his if you look at some of his older stuff too you're like just wow I have no idea how you did that like how many hours that took it would be insane for me to try that so he does oil painting uh, he does pastels he used to do colored pencil but he kind of shot away from it like me so I think a lot of people are kind of shying away from colored pencil a little bit it's interesting to see people going for pastels because it's so much easier on your hands and so much faster all right so got that smooge that nose in like a that like a dece like a dece like a dece right there yeah yeah that's cool so we're really kind of wandering in unknown territory here, guys. We're doing pan pastel. We're doing um, suede mat board. We're doing all sorts of weird things. I figured it'd be nice to try something a little different. So a lot of people ask, why do you choose, or how do you choose the color of your paper? And the answer to that is you want the color of the paper that if you don't mind it peeking out it doesn't look terrible so if you look at one of my failed experiments which i already threw away what i did was i tried to draw this white dog on a black paper and because the fibers are sticking up and not all the fibers get covered with the pastel you see these little black dots all over the place which which would look good in this but it does not look good in a, in a white you know mostly white pet so that's kind of the limitation of, of what I hit there. You don't want to use a paper to wear if some of it's peeking out as bad. So this color is called Thicket. And the Thicket paper is sort of the natural background of this picture. So that's why I chose that. All right, so as we come across on the outside, it gets a little darker right here. I know I'm going out of frame for the YouTube VidMe Minds guys, I apologize. Try to stay in frame more. So most of this is gonna be gone over in colored pencil. So it doesn't really matter that much if we miss little spots or if little spots are too dark or whatever like that. It's not really gonna matter much. So from what I'm trying here, this does take multiple levels of pastel pretty well. So if I go over this gray with this black, it works out pretty good. It's not too bad as you go over across through here. Get a little more of this black and come across there. So using my palette cam, I hope that's helpful to you guys. All right, and then coming back up through here. And that looks pretty good. Now we have like a black splooch. Splooch. Again, I don't have a bunch of colors. So if you're asking like, well, where's your solid black color or whatnot, I don't have it, man. <laughs> I literally, all you see is what you, all you see here is, is all I have. So I, I need to invest in more pan pastel. 
if I'm going to do suede mat board, I will. Um, I think my biggest problem at the moment is, is I like to experiment too much, so I'm not really sure what I'll end up doing from day to day, which is probably not good. I want to be careful with this eye, because you could screw that up pretty hard. That's coming through here and through here. Yeah, this could go really, really bad. I'm gonna be careful. I know I have a dark area under here, and then, and then from there, this kind of comes out a little bit. Yeah, like that. And then over here, you got like a little splooch, a little splooch like these, like these, like that. Yeah, looks all right. And then in between, we have like a sort of a not as dark. We're gonna mix a a gray with a dark and see how that works out. I sort of do like pan pastels where you get the ability to mix between two different colors by just dipping them into each other. All right. So I like that under the eye. And then if we come up here we have a darker area here that comes out like there. Try that, it looks pretty good. And then we have like a, a thicket collar that comes up through there. Um, that's gonna be a little brighter. So we're gonna try this color here and we may immediately regret it. We try it out and we do immediately regret it. That looks absolutely terrible. Uh, let's see, did I clean these things? I clean it on the other piece of swag mat board, that's how. All right, so that's gonna require a little more divine intervention there. If I just kind of blended, how does that look? That looks even more terrible. Congratulations, you have ruined that section of the painting. Okay, so we'll stick with the darks for now, apparently. I do not have the proper color to do that section, but we can come through here and get like down across through there. And that comes and meets this darker area here. And then we have this darker area up here. Right, so that looks good. And then over here, I want it a little bit darker right down through here because we're gonna put white hairs on it and see how that works out. That looks pretty good. A little more dark area there and I'm happy with it okay cool so let's go down to the nose area so I know this in here is fairly black right there where you have the inside of the nostril and we're not going to totally make that really really dark but we're going to get sort of close Right, and then that comes out a little farther here. And this is, I mean, if you have sore wrists from working on the computer all day, Pan Pastel is your savior. Because this is no, no strain at all. This is really nice. Uh, we have here, and come down, and go up through there. And then we're gonna sneak in a little bit of paint there. And then up across through here. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now we have the darker area around the mouth here. So we'll do, I think a 90 minute stream now and then another 90 minute stream later and try to get a few hours it's gonna take longer than than most pets just because of the detail and the fact that we have to go in with our uh, we got to go in with pencils so and we usually go in with pencils anyway I know but this is gonna be a little bit more detailed so what happened is uh, talking to some people about show pieces 
and I don't really keep any of my pieces. I donate everything that I make to nursing homes, the local nursing homes, or I just paint someone's pet for free or I'll do something. And so I don't really have anything that I've kept other than one pet. So what I want to do is have a couple of show pieces, just something that I have that I can show people or I can take to a meeting of artists or something that's that's portable and looks nice and is more detailed than the neighbor's dog kind of thing. So that's sort of what we're going for here. We're going to see how that's going to work out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go on the edge here. Is that showing from the camera? Yeah. A little bit. Uh, we have a limit to how far below we can go to where we just completely vanish off the camera. All right, so we come up here. That's way, way, way too dark. So we blend it in. This stuff blends pretty good. It's not like just amazing. But if you're gonna do this, I would recommend doing it on pastel mat. Pastel mat is gonna be your it's gonna be your best friend. Pastel mat is a nice, nice service to do this stuff on. I know Jason Morgan uses pastel mat, so and he does it amazingly well with this stuff. So he just started pastels like a few months ago, and his are, of course, photorealistic, but he's been doing animals for like 20 years, 25 years or something. So, see if this is going to look okay. I think that looks all right. And it's not going to be record-breaking amazing, but it's going to look all right. I know that comes down a little bit there. And we'll get this and come down a little more here. And again, we're running to this being kind of spotty, so we'll try to blend it in a little better. down my thing my jig my thing my duty all right that's gonna be darker uh, and then down here it's going to be a little dark right in this area here all right I like that and I like this pretty good okay so coming back up through here we can get this darker area up here is going to do us nicely coding stage time to have all sorts of fun with the base uh, coats the base the coats so your base coating stage is just eliminating work later that's all it is you just want to get something on the paper that's going to look okay so you don't have to work as hard when you come in with the colored pencils, when you come in with the pastel pencils, etc., etc. So, hey Susan, how are you? All right, we come in through here, through there. It's going to be all right. All right. So on the outside, I see a darker color, and. That darker color extends down through here, sort of. So right, I know is grab a D 
different type of pastel for that section. So I have a few pastels I've already picked out that I like. And one of those is Brown Earth 26, otherwise known as Blood Elf 26. And this will give us a nice, nice, look at that. What do you think, Susan? Look at this. That just makes that pop out. It's like, whoa, that's awesome. Hello, Mr. Awesome. It looks awesome. All right, like that. And then across next to the eye, we have this. We'll press a little harder to get some more pastel in there. So that looks pretty good there. And now we'll come over here to where we messed up the eye. Susan, I'm just happy this thing takes more pastel. Because, man, I messed up this eye area right here. It looked just terrible. All right. I think that's a limit with... Wow, it looks really good. So you can sort of see a limit of what you can do with pan pastel on this surface versus coming in with a real pastel. And this is one of the cheats. We're using a... It's declared as a soft pastel, but this is not a soft pastel. Let me see what I got. That ain't soft pastel. <laughs> so we're using a, quote, soft pastel, which is actually a pretty hard pastel. And we're, we're going the direction of the hair. And so now you get like this fake hair almost coming around through here. And it looks like there's some hair action going on this lion. And in reality, all you're doing is just scraping this across the surface. I'm just going with the, the flow of the hairs here. So come out across through here. And just going across like that. And then we come up through here. And we can make some sort of, again, some sort of a, a fakish hair thing here. Just going in the direction. And, um, and it looks pretty good, so it doesn't look bad at all. And so we have like a darker one of these over here. Before we do that, right here we have that. That looks pretty good. And then under here, we have sort of the same thing. Let's see, right, so we have a dark area underneath the eye there. Under that, we have this, and we're going to come in here with a pencil, colored pencil, and make that really magical looking. Oh, yeah, pan pastels are great. And the Great American are great, too. Pun intended. Great, Great American, great. All right, while we're here, we can... Well, that's going to be a little lighter. Ooh, we got a tricky area here. Like, right here... It's a little darker than this, but what I'm going to do is sort of base it in this, and then over here, like again, we have a little darker area. We can sort of fake that with this, I think, for now, because that's a light area right there. All right, and then we have a light area coming out through there, but this extends out through that. So that's going to be covered in, again, hairs. But if you look at the picture, and it's important to take a good look at your picture and see the color that's underneath the little individual hairs. Because if you just squint your eye and you don't actually pay attention to the whole thing, in other words, um, you just see the, the, the hair combined with the underlayer color, you're going to mess it up, basically. And you're going to have a, um, it's going to be too light or too dark. So what you're doing is, is you need something that you can put the hairs on. Does that make sense? So if you look in the nose, like right here, right? In the reference picture right there. If you look at that, that is black with white hairs. And But what you don't want to do is come in here with a gray, because if you just squint your eyes, it looks gray. What you want to do is look, make sure you're looking at what's underneath the hairs, which is black, and you, and you want to put that in. 
and then after you put that in, now you're all set to do your hairs on top and it looks perfect. But if you were to put gray on there, if you put gray right here, right? If you put gray and you put white on top of it, it's gonna look weird. It's not gonna look good. And I know that's kind of a weird rule, but basically look underneath where the hairs are to see what color that is. And that's the color you wanna put for your base coats. And then you're gonna come on top and put the, the actual hair color, which in this case is white, on top of this. And it's gonna look wonderful. It's gonna look exactly like the picture. So that's the important thing. Just make sure you got your colors to be accurate as to what you're seeing in the picture. And you're gonna be, you're gonna have a great day on that. You're gonna have a fantastic day when you do that. All right, so we're gonna do more pan pastels here. So now we got the bottom of the nose that's coming in through here. But what I want to do is just get this dark gray. And ideally I would use black in some of these areas, but I don't have it. I just have this dark gray. But I do have black regular pastels. So we're going to use the mix of those. That looks cool. So if you see the black is coming in, it's just sneak it in through here. See, look at that effect we get with that. So we're just going to sneak in just little shades of that darker area, just sneak it in through there, and it gives a nice, look at that nice look. Get a nice look through here. Come in through here, and then like up here is like black with little with white hair, so we're going to do that. We're going to keep a little of that, a little of that pastel color in there. That Blood Elf 12 or whatever it was, we're going to get some of that. Keep a little of that Blood of 12 right through there. And just barely, barely gonna touch the pan and get some of that dark, dark color. Oh, that's nice. <gasps> that's nice. That's really nice. All right, I'm gonna blend, I'm like ruining this thing. Luckily these are cheap. Pan Pastel's really nice. It takes up a lot of space though, man. So the only thing I don't like about Pan Pastel is it's gummy. So it doesn't mix with velour very well. It takes up a ton of space. And plus when you try to move it and you get you slip and your hand dips in that stuff, it's really kind of weird. You gotta go wash it off. You're like, ugh, nasty. I think most of them are non-toxic or low toxicity, so it's all good. Not like you're gonna get sick or nothing. But I wear gloves because I don't clean that underneath, out of underneath my fingernails. Not a big fan of that at all. And that happened to me. I like did something and I got just a big cake of something pastel underneath my fingernails. Try to get it out forever. And you can see it underneath my nail for like the next like week. Like it doesn't matter how many showers you take or trying to get it out. Just really annoying. I was not a fan. But I do like pastels. So now I wear gloves. You can make it underneath my fingernail through these gloves. God bless you, Mr. Pastel, because you really worked hard for that one. All right, that looks all right. Here we go. You love getting pastels on your fingers. I don't mind it on my fingers. I mind it underneath my fingernails. Cause you gotta dig it out. Not a fan at all. I don't mind them on my fingers. You can wash that off. So coming in through here, I think we got a dark area there. That looks all right. So I do like the pan pastels underneath here, but I don't like it's still kind of gummy. Not much you could do. Um, all right, so we got the nose all right. We got this dark area up here. And now we have a dark area sort of coming down out through here. And it comes down, down through there. So that's all right. It needs to be a little darker here. That looks all right. Okay, and we have like a lighter area there, but that's dark right here. It's dark underneath here, like right there. A little darker, so that's all right. 
and darker as you come over here and then it comes down it's a little dark as well and then that's a mix so have I used UART sanded paper uh, yeah I don't like it for drawing hairs it did not perform well that and me Tiana's touch did not perform well for drawing little individual hairs with colored pencil uh, I did not do well but it's nice if you're doing a landscape it can't be beat and when I was playing with portraits also really liked it but for drawing individual little bitty hairs it's fairly harsh it's not very forgiving Alright, so I don't want to blend that out in the eye because that's not blended there. Okay, so it's pretty good. What I do want is like a knock my light over is what I want apparently. No, what I do want is a darker brown and I already have one selected. That is the B5. So we'll try Blood L5 right through here. Try to blend it in a little bit, but this paper does not blend well. It's one of the things. This this paper is not meant for pastel, like guaranteed. It's not meant at all for pastel. But we're going to force it to work. We're not going to accept a bad paper. We're going to put in a little extra work, make it look nice. All right, so that's all right. Then over here, as we come out from the eye, we have that. That looks that looks all right. Then we have a little brown right here. We press really light. Not like it matters. It makes a pretty substantial statement when you put it in. I do like just a little color here. Not like overwhelming, but I want something with a little color. I just don't want this gray and black and all that. So that looks pretty good. And we have some darker brown like rub out in here. Okay, we're pressing super, super, super light. And this is Unison Pastel, one of my absolute favorites. All right, again, we're pressing super, super light right here. I'm literally letting the pastel fall and I'm dragging it. I'm not even really pressing, so. Um, what I want here is just the effect of a darker color, but I don't want the gray throughout the whole thing. And I want this this paper color called thicket to be um, to have a darker base that we're going to come in and we're going to put in a light light brown colored pencil on top of this so and I want brown to sort of sneak out beneath the colored pencil but I don't want a lot of it so again we're pressing insanely light like I'm letting gravity put the pastel on at this point all right so I'm happy with that now let's come over here and let's get the same sort of thing over here. Again, I'm letting gravity pretty much put the pastel on at this point. And so because this is one of the cheats, because we are going the direction of the hair, it's going to give us a remarkable advantage when we come back and do the colored pencil because you won't need hardly any of it, hardly any of the colored pencil and it'll just look great. And again, I know we have a dark area over here that's black, but we're gonna mix that with a brown because I want some color again. And I know the colored pencil hairs are gonna give us the color that we want. However, um, I wanna have a little more color underneath it to, to peek out, and that's the idea here, is just to get a little more color to peek out because 
Let me explain my theory that I call um, the Moore theory. And the Moore theory says that because this is going to be behind glass and because it's going to be three to six feet away from your spectator, you need to install a little bit more light, a little bit more dark, you need a little more saturation, you just want a little more of a lot of different things. Because other, that's going to be the difference, because what they're going to do, they're, they're going to go, the person you give this to is going to go to Michael's, it's going to get a $20 frame, and they're going to put it in it, and that's not going to be like the best glass in the world, and they're going to put it in a room um, where they purchased a a dollar fifty bulb from Home Depot, and and their home is not a gallery. I mean, you can't expect someone's home to be a gallery. So now your painting is competing with the lighting. Now your painting is competing with the wall. I mean, it's 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 really going to be kind of bad. It it loses saturation. It loses light and darkness. It color shifts. It does horrible things. So to compensate for this, what you want to do is install about twenty. 25 maybe 30 percent more saturation uh, as well as lights and darks and just anything that will catch the eye and this is especially true in the facial area in the eyes so you want to make the eyes a little darker you're going to make the eyes a little lighter in the lights etc etc so that that's the more theory and um, when i give stuff to people i normally will ask them to send me a picture of it framed where it's you know where it's hanging and you'll see the things that I did a little more on are substantially look substantially better than ones I did not so that's always interesting that's what you should do every time you give one of these like if you you're making this for your aunt or uncle or whatever it was dog or cat or whatever and then um, make sure they send you a picture of it hanging on the wall because you can instantly see if you needed to adjust something. What you don't want to do is just kind of let it go. Hope for the best. I did my best. I hope it goes well. You want to constantly just sort of re-evaluating your work, re-evaluating what you did, and all that stuff to try to get a little bit better. And that's all you really want, right? You just want to get like one, two percent better a year. Uh, you will be a master in no time. If you just get a little better, every painting, you don't have to be substantially better. Just be a little better. From one painting to the next, and that will do you good. All right. So I got my browns. Browns look all right. I need some light like light browns here but I want to base this out like that okay all right cool that looks good I like it sort of all right let's put this back up and come in here with a lighter brown this is almost a pink this is pretty light and I want to get that Just a hint of that, like not a lot, because that is pretty, pretty obscenely bright. A right, little bit of this, and this is where I want, like right here, this is why I got it to go right here. Like that. And that's a little too much, but we're gonna make it work. And then we have hairs coming down through here that are dark. So at this point, I want a darker color, but not black. Let's see. So I've chosen dark five. So this is dark five, and again, unison. And what I want to do at this point, I want to sort of ditch some of the pan pastel and go with some of this. 
So I want a dark area here. Like that. This is going to give me a little more control over this. And then because the pan pastel did me right over here, it's going to give me the ability to come out like that. And get this nice dark area there. And hit this here. A little bit of this dark up through there. Okay, that looks good. And now I want dots essentially here. So this is a pinkish color on the nose. I'm not sure I have that or not, but I would not mind just getting some dots. Again, this is where you're cheating. You're just putting little dots here like that. You're not like making a huge amount of detail here. You just want to put some dots. That's going to look pretty good when you come in with the colored pencil. And that's just less work on you when you come in with a colored pencil. So um, I know here we have like some, some hairs that are coming out there. Underneath the eye, I want to be careful because I want to do a lot of colored pencil there. Uh, but I do sort of want... And the good thing about suede matte board is you can put a lot of layers of colored pencil on that. So then I want to come down through there with this. So that looks alright. And then we have this area down through there. And then over here, same thing. Underneath the eye, we have this dark. And that's where it comes out. Right across through there. Alright, so now, on the outside here, we have a lot of dark areas. And the dark areas are sort of mixed in around the hairs. So what I want to do, and again, this is one of your cheats. So you see, this is a lot of hairs. And we're going to draw a lot of hairs in here. But what I want to do is get a, a, a hair type of motion around in this area. So if that makes sense, I want, I want it to be curled. So you'll see in this area here, all the hairs are curled. So I want to get a curl type motion to this. And I say motion and meaning I don't want to actually draw the individual hairs, but I want to kind of go in the direction of the motion. So, so we have like hairs that are flowing this way and down here we have hairs that are flowing that way. And then on the edge we have hairs going here, there, and everywhere, and hair, everywhere, hair, hair, everywhere, hair, like that, so here we have a little motion, and what this is going to do is give you a hair look to where you don't have to draw as much with the pencils, if that makes sense. Less work with the pencils is our goal. So it's like when you're painting a house, so let's say you need to paint your house. You're not going to get a small detail brush from your art library and go out and paint the house with that thing, right? You're going to get a big brush. You're going to do as much as you can on the house with a big brush so it saves you time. So that's essentially what you're doing here. This is the big brush theory. There you go. Do as much as I can with the big old brush. And then later, I can come in across and do that. There's a black area here, and then down through here. I know that's off camera, sorry. All right, I'll do the off camera stuff later. All right, so here we have a motion of hairs. And so if you turn this on its side, on the sharp end, you get like a motion of hairs through here. So that up here, when you're coming down, it's so like you have that area there, which is dark, right? And then underneath it, you have like little hair motion that's going every which way. What we're going to do is with this big brush, just come in and do the motion like that. It's not the final product, don't panic. Don't be like, that didn't look like the line, man. I watched him for like an hour and still didn't look like a line. I'm not pleased. That. Okay, so that looks nice. That gets us the underside of that. And again, through here, again, we have the black. And then 
once the nose comes down, we have like a hard line there. And then coming out of that, we have the little motion of the hairs here. Like that. Okay, and we go through here. We're gonna have the same type of thing there. Just have the motion of the hairs across through there. Okay, so that's gonna do us good. And the same thing underneath the nose, sort of have a similar little bit of base coating through that. You don't have like a lot of that, but, and then let's go up through here and let's sort of enhance what we already have here with this nice dark color. Come down through there and again, sort of enhance this with a little bit of motion. Like through that. Okay, that looks good. And of course, up through here, we're gonna press really light. We have like dark, kind of like a darker area where hairs are coming out through here. Now, this is where we really cheat because we're gonna go exactly the direction of the hairs, especially as you come up across through here. And you don't wanna make it too dark because that's, I mean, it's a fairly light area, but it just has, stuff there and so you see that pan pastel is really doing us good it it's eliminating the base color of the paper and it's giving us this nice mysterious sort of darkness that's coming through there and I think this is a dark brown dark five it looks like a dark brown so that's gonna do us good as well because that'll give us a little room to come in with a darker Color and make our really dark, dark, dark areas. I like that. So these are fairly short hairs. Don't go wild with this stuff. So that looks pretty good. All right, and then that's pretty cool there. Okay, so. I like the brown here, but it's not all brown. It has some darkness in there, so we'll put this through there. Again, we got shorter hairs, so don't get too excited with this thing. Come in through there, and we have like some area to cross through there. That's gonna be pretty cool, all right? And then outside of all of this area, we have a fairly dark, long-haired section here. So we're just gonna kind of represent that right here. And we're just gonna go different directions with the hair. If you've seen my video on how to make hairs, long hairs, you wanna go different directions. You wanna go there, one there, one there, one straight, one sort of long, one short. You wanna have enough variety to where it doesn't look repetitive. And so in his goatee here, he does have like a solid white area. We're gonna do that with colored pencil. I really don't wanna to touch that with a lot of dark, but I do want some of the long dark hairs to sort of be through here. And those are gonna come up across outside of this sort of brown area. And that's gonna come across through there. And again, this is a dark brown, so it's not like obscenely, obscenely dark. We are gonna get a full black after we do this and come in with that. And again, we have some hairs that are long, some are short. Don't wanna to have too much of a pattern. So that looks pretty good. Come back in through here. And then we have that dark area that is here. We need to extend that, I think, a little bit across through here. Come down. All right, that looks pretty good. But up here, it gets a little darker. So we're gonna have some of that there. And I know that's off camera, sorry. I'm OCD, I need to at least start it. Just long, so in case you wonder what I'm doing off camera, all I'm doing is the same thing I just did in the, in the other section. So that looks all right. That looks like a bunch of random brush strokes is what that looks like. And that's okay. That's sort of what I want at this point. Is that on camera? Nope. I 
we hit the hour, let's do another 30 minutes. Just want to again get just base coats in. See if we can finish this in 90 minutes. That would be amazing. Does a pastel blend with your fingers on the suede mat board? No, not at all. This is brutal, brutal surface. This is not a pleasant surface to pastel on. So I can get my finger and try to blend this and you can see it's not doing anything. It's, it's brutal. Um, okay, so I know I want some white areas there, I want some white areas there. I want a darker brown here. Before I do that, just a little bit more of this right there. Cool. And we can come in through here. And we have the nose starting there. So that blends into that. And these are really short hairs, so you gotta be kind of careful. And that's, okay, the eye stops there. So if I come over here, that's where it is. Like that, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little of the nose. I know that's a highly detailed area, so we wanna be very careful. And what I wanna do is I just wanna dot like a warlock and wow, I just want to dot this area right here. More dots. Stay out of the whelps. Leroy Jenkins. All right, okay, so that is a pinkish color. Let's see what we have in a pinkish color. Not anything? What is this? That is fairly close, I think. We'll try it. Susan will try it, see how it goes. This could go bad. Not too bad. do is make this not as obnoxious and uh, I'm not sure how maybe because I'm naturally obnoxious let's see you know what I could do I could get my good old 513 Giro which by the way is a darker green it's pitch black but it's labeled as a darker green. But this is the most beautiful black you will ever see in your entire life. It is just absolutely stunning. It goes on great. It goes on any surface great. Susan, I could get this and put it on my car tires and it would look great. Be like, that's a nice car tire, man. Is that dark green? Yeah. You'd get non-stop compliments is what you would get. Use this on anything. Like paint your tub with it. Ooh, like that's a gorgeous tub. What did you do? All right. There, that looks pretty good. Yes, I know one side is higher than the other. I'm OCD, I noticed that long before you did. All right. So that comes in more. And we'll come in and forgive some of these sins with colored pencils, so don't worry about being exact here. 
Um, and again, I want some dots here. More dots, more dots, stay out of the whelps. A little bit of shine. A little bit of shine. Like the shining. The shining. Don't you mean the shining? Be quiet, don't you want to get you don't want to get sued? Okay, and then See, Susan, this really makes this thing pop, doesn't it? Like this brings it from just okay to kind of cool. Right. And then, I know this is fairly darker. Susan, I need better lighting. Can you put the exact name of your dark green black? This is Giro, G-I-R-A-U-L-T, and the number is 513. And you'll see it says Giro Soft Pastel, which is hilarious because look, that's not a soft pastel. I don't know why they label it as a soft pastel. You can drill through a car door with these pastels. So what I think Giraud did was they have some sort of binder that allows them to um, make just a really, really nice pastel. And it maintains the hardness of like a harder, cheaper pastel. So for the most part, when you get like student pastels, beginner pastels, they're fairly hard pastels. And this is actually harder than they are. And yet they use just a thick, beautiful pigment. Just a gorgeous pigment. And it's really nice. All right, so that looks really nice. It looks nice. So we'll come in here and we'll get some hairs up through there. Here's up through there, and then a little highlight in between there. All right, so that is a bright, bright yellow up there. And I don't really want to touch that quite yet, but I do want to get in through here with some of this. Good. And then through here, I want a little bit more of a oomph right in there. Okay. Uh, I like that. And I like that section there. So now I want a brownish gray to sort of fill in this area here. Because I know I have this dark area there. That looks nice. And then you come in through here like that with shorter hairs here. And then we can just sort of sneak a little bit of this dark area across through here. Susan, here's where the cheek comes in. Just putting little shorter hairs here, little dots across through here. So you have this interesting area. I'm just going to do this across up through here. And because you did this, you don't have to do a whole lot with your colored pencil except put white dots at this point. So you just say you want to go different directions. What you don't want to do is go the same direction every time. It's going to look weird and fake. You go varying directions as you come across through here.
and Susan, you got like this area right here where it has shorter hairs. And then this comes in across through there. I mean, if you look, it's not exact. I'm not making exact lines. I'm not placing the hairs in exact spots. I just want the movement feel across through here. Like that. That looks good. And then as we come down through here, I want to press really light. Just let gravity do its thing up through here. Because we have like a gray area. And I know we already installed gray, but I just want to come in through here with this darker color. Just sort of tease it a little bit with a darker shade. Because up through here as you come through, it's a little bit darker. And the hairs are really short, so you want to be careful. All right. And I know we have a lighter area here, and I want to outline that. I don't, I don't want to rough over it, but just want to outline it. Okay, and then as you come down, again, it's gray. It's not really, really dark. But I do want to just sort of fill this in here. that and looking at the thumbnail that looks all right <laughs> that don't look half bad I thought it was gonna be terrible Susan I thought I was doomed I'm like this is this new paper it's not friendly at all I knew for sure I was doomed Susan we may recover this after all maybe not guaranteeing anything. I've thrown one of these in the trash already this week, or last week. You never know. Could go into the trash. All right, I like that. So uh, now we have a darker, we don't want to touch this at all. Ooh, I do want to touch it. Hey Susan, you want to be, you want to do something weird here? We're going to get a white. This is not a white. This is a Juro 359. And what that is, it's a light blue. So you can tell I don't go for the traditional white. I go for the light blue. And this light blue, it's whiter than white, sort of. Sort of, kind of. And it's whiter than white because it has a cool tint, obviously blue, to it. And what that does is get you a white, but it has something interesting in it that your eye goes, wait, what's that? There's something cool there. All right, that comes down through there. I like the effect. What do you think, Susan? Where do you purchase your Giro? Uh, I go to Dakota Pastels or Fine Art Store. Or you can go to you can go to Jerry's Artorama. That's local. Jerry's Artorama will have these and they're cheap at Jerry's. They're only four dollars and sixty-nine cents. But if you go to Dakota Pastels, I think they're almost five bucks. Well, I know four dollars and sixty-nine cents is almost five bucks anyway, but I think it's like $4.90 or $0.80 cents or something else. You can save a few cents by going to Jerry's Artorama. And Jerry's will have free shipping too if you go over a, a certain amount. So, and these are Giro. Um, the light blue is 359 and the dark green is 513. And those two colors are black and white, but they're neither black and white. I know that makes no sense. But what it is, it's a blacker than black black, and it's a whiter than white white, which makes no sense. Maybe I should just not talk during these videos. The more I talk, the less sense I make. Okay, so 
So again, we're getting our whiter than white. And you can see that looks really white. Like I look on the monitor, that really pops out. I like that. All right. I like that a lot. It's nice. It makes my Saturday a better Saturday. Isn't it time to eat yet? I'm fat, it's always time to eat. Nope, I got 15 more minutes. Maybe I'll sing. No, I'll sing terrible. Don't know what I would do. All right, let's make some dots. Susan, check it out. We're making them really small. My hand's covering up what I'm doing. I'm not really doing anything. I'm stabbing the paper or the mat board. I'm stabbing it, just giving it a little bit of a stab, just a little stab here and there. We're going to come back with colored pencil and make all the details, but you can tell I'm fairly happy with the underpainting when I start doing this garbage. Like, man, I thought you said we're using colored pencil. I tuned in for the colored pencil. I haven't seen a pencil yet. False advertising. This does do color pencil very well. All right, just making little stabs. That looks like a, a small mouse ran over his face. Small mouse had pastel dust on his feet. You know them mice, they get the pastel dust on their feet and they run right across that lion's face. really light Susan we're pressing really light all right and then over here again pressing really light just want a little hint a little hint little mouse feet little mouse feet and up through here this is like light I'm letting gravity, I'm literally hitting it and letting gravity loosen the pastel dust here. Okay, looks all right. And then over here, we have the lighter area. It's really light over here, Susan. We're just gonna, again, let just gravity just touch this to the paper. Not pressing at all. that and then over here we have our lighter area in the dark gives us a nice base what do you think it's not a bad base it's not a bad base coat after all go back over my mouse feet All right, looking at the small monitor, this is very pleasing. Got 359 and 513 in my cart. Any other Giro you recommend? Absolutely not. The problem is they're five bucks and they're that size, which is not very big. And you can get a much better, well, you can get a Unison, which is almost the same amount of pastel for only 250 at, uh, from the UK, so no. I mean, once you have these two, you will be so pleased. You'll just be amazed at the amount of stuff you can make with this stuff. Because Giro, I don't know what they do. The, the pigment they use is just nuts. It's insane. I have no idea how they get that much quality pigment out there. Um, so at this point, I want a dark brown, but I don't want it to slap me in the face. So we're going to try 
Unison BE29, and this is brown earth, but you know me, I call it blood elf. And again, we're just going to just tap this in there like that. <gasps> Susan, that's it. I found it. I lucked out. This is perfect. This is like a, a desaturated brown, and it's not like in-your-face brown either. Like some of those browns are really, really, really dark. And what you can do, I know we're going to do white hairs over this, but what we can do is just lightly, lightly hit it in these slightly darker areas here. So we'll just get that magical little tone out of that and just make it good like that. What do you think, Susan? Looking all right? I know we got a little yellow over here, but I already hit it with that sort of yellowish stuff. So I just want to get this little darker tone. A little darker tone comes through here. And shorter hairs, the closer you get inside of the face, the shorter the hairs. Really, other than whiskers, you really don't have long hairs in animals' faces. I mean, the exception, there are always exceptions to the rules, right? You do have some of these animals that have like these massively long hairs in their face. They're hanging in their face. But I mean, like once you get across the nose and around the eye, the hairs are shorter. Probably because, I mean, in the, in the wild, an animal probably doesn't want really, really long hairs in their face. Because that's going to affect their vision. Seeing predators and stuff like that, right? Uh, all right. And I already have a dark up here, but I'm just going to just tickle this right there. Just a little, just a, just something there that's interesting. The more variety I think you have, to a limit, I think it just looks better. All right. And that looks pretty good. Let's look at the thumbnail. Wow, I really like it. I found Animal Tans Hard to Find, but I love the Butterscotch series of Great American. Yeah, that's, that's the thing with Great American, that Butterscotch. I don't know how they did that that perfect but even and I bought a f almost a full set of unison browns and I still can't match the perfectness of butterscotch it's really odd a great American really hit it out of the ballpark like if there's one pastel I would give and you're doing dogs it would be great American's butterscotch by far that's gonna be your your best thing and then we have like a little bit here then I love butterscotch. I can't stop talking about butterscotch. And the lady there that works at Great American, she's so nice. I think it's Diane. Oh, okay. So now I think I'm pretty much done. I wanted to go 90 minutes and um, I didn't quite get there, but I think that we're at a level to where I'm happy with the face and the lower area is off camera the upper area is off camera too and i don't really want to do that because i know we have viewers on on social media stuff like youtube and vidme and all that other stuff but what i'll do is drop all my stuff after i drop all my stuff what i'll do is just stop now and um i'll do those areas and with the same techniques i'm showing you now and then we'll come back, and I'll be here at 1 Central and be back online. So thank you so much for joining me, and you have a great day.